Man, shout out to the Love and Hip Hop T for reposting the following. So your man Milan Christopher from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, what was that, season two? Said the following on social media with a host congregate. He posted an article from Alex Welch, which was posted July 24th of 2018, titled Monday Cable Ratings Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Premieres Down. Let me see. Something else he posted, which reads Love and Hip Hop Hollywood ratings are falling drastically. The VH1 series ranked in a 1.1 rating in adults 18 to 49 with 2.12 million viewers, down one tenth from the 1.2 that its season four premiere had scored last year. It was the only bro broadcast of the, and, and then it just, yeah, it cut off. So I, I don't know what else it said. He also posted something which reads, VH1 smash hit Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season two premieres to the tune of 3.6 million total viewers on Monday. Season premiere also shines as the number one social show on all TV and the number one non-sports cable telecast among adults and women in the 18 to 49 demographic. And then he posted something else, which was from TV by the Numbers, which was posted September 10th of 2015. VH1 smash hit Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season two premiere garners 3.6 million viewers Monday. And he wrote on there due to Milan Christopher's groundbreaking gay storyline. I think that he added that shit, uh, <laughs> bro. Uh, I, I, I'm listen. I have mad love for Milan, but I'm at the going in, going on this Negro in this video. <laughs> well, let me read to you what he said. On I guess this is on Instagram. Shout out to VH1 Love Hip Hop T. VHH. No, I mean <laughs> VHH. <laughs> v Love and Hip Hop T. Excuse me. T H E L H H. T E A. That's the Instagram handle. Okay. Here's what they wrote. Rather. Here's a, oh my god, I'm fucking up big time. I'm not editing that out either. Milan Christopher said, Bitch, the ratings falling like leaves in October. Lowest ratings in the franchise's history. Laughing my effing A off. See, I like numbers because no matter what you say, numbers are non debatable. Laughing crying emoji. Food for thought. Them hoes be trying to play me like I wasn't bringing in all types of numbers, ratings, innovation, relevancy, and change to Hollywood's whack ass cast of same same old repetitive ass storylines people are tired of the fake ass redundant shit and not seeing reality on what's supposed to be a reality show you didn't let me expose the truth of my storyline to the fans and y'all lied and tried to cover it up to viewers who already connected to me as a person they found to be more authentic you lost their trust and the ratings have fallen ever since now you go recreate my storyline yet again with me and Akbar fight in the parking lot with now him and some random in a parking lot like you did yesterday and continue to act like I wasn't there the whole time when the fake ass sex tape came out with Tierra Marie laughing out loud. He spelled her name wrong. T T I E R R A is T E A I R R A. Wow. He spelled his own best friend's name. Anyways, laughing out loud. Go ahead. Continue to show the world just how fake and scripted your quote reality show really is. Shrugging emoji. Fuck out of here. Laughing out loud. Hire some new story writers <laughs> slash script writers because the holes you got over there ain't cutting it. Every season, y'all out trying to hire carbon copy gaze of me, trying to get that 3.6 million viewers back, laughing out loud instead of finding common ground with the person who brought them in. The F. Are y'all this effing stupid? But y'all mother F is still cut. This is long as hell, y'all. This, this is longer than my mean three and a half. Y'all mother effers still copying my effing life and my interaction. Stop. If you aren't cutting me a effing check, move the F around with the fake shit at K Michelle Music. Can't save your sinking ship alone. Maintaining fan favorites and the cast viewers connect with and showing their true reality of your storylines can. There is no reality show without the reality. Ugh, clapping or waving emoji. I don't know. But don't take my word for it. Take the word. Of the 2 million viewers y'all lost since I was on, waving emoji at Miss Rock 68. I think she's a producer for the show. Mona Scott Young, producer. Steph A. Teaser, that's Stephanie Gale. I think her name is, she's a, she's a producer at VH1 at Love & Hip Hop. So he wanted to make sure that they saw that garbage. Now here's the thing. Is Milan entertaining? Yes. Is, does Milan have a cool personality? Yes. 
was Milan one of my favorites from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season two? Yes. Was Milan entertaining? Yes. Is Milan a good rapper? Yes. Is Milan a good model? Yes. Is Milan that ninja? Yes. Is Milan the reason why the ratings are down this season? Hell no. Will the ratings still be where they are if he was there? Yes. Here's why. TV is having to compete with the internet. Okay. And I'm going to read a separate article to you guys, which is posted August 1st of 2018. Wow, that was today by Alex Welch on TV by the numbers dot zap it rather zap to it the number two tv by the numbers dot zap to it dot com for the record i just looked up this article right and i want to show you guys something which shows that what milan is saying is bullshit it's really interesting <coughs> excuse me that's for my haters the title of the article is love and hip-hop hollywood leads in 18 to 49 hannity dominates total viewers Cable top 25 for July 23rd to the 29th. What is Hannity? I, I guess they mean that show Hannity it isn't like a Fox show or something. I think it's a new show. Anyways, let me go to read this article to you guys, okay? Love and Hip Hop Hollywood climbed to the top in adults 18 to 49 for the cable week of July 23rd to July 29th. That was when Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season five premiered, right? The VH1 series led the demographic with a 1.1 rating, while USA's WWE Monday Night Raw scored the following three spots for the top 25 with consistent 0.9s. Several of the Discovery Channel's special Shark Week broadcasts, including Great White Abyss, Laws of Jaws, and Ear Jaws, The Hunted, landed in the week's top 10 as well with 0.8. Fox News' Hannity absolutely dominated until review, total viewers grabbing the top four spots in the week. Its Wednesday night broadcast garnered the week's biggest audience with 3.46 million viewers. Quote, the Ingram angle rounded out the top five also on Fox News with 3.03 3 million viewers. Top 25 original Cable shows include ties and adults 18 to 49 for July 23rd to 29th of 2018. This, this is my point of reading this article, right? When I look at this list, it says Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season five was at number one. Network VH1, day, Monday, time, 8 p.m. 18 to 49 rating, 18 to 49 viewers, one slash, rather one comma, three, four, four. They were above everyone. Every damn body. As far as cable is concerned, Love and Hip Hop, VH1, number one, number one, number one, number one, number one, like Dylon, 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 Dillinger. Just like how Dylon Dillinger is the top five rappers of all time. That's, that was from a Dave Chappelle show skit. Love and Hip Hop is basically running the yard. They're number one. When Love and Hip Hop Atlanta comes on, it's number one. When Love and Hip Hop Miami comes on, it's number one. When Love and Hip Hop New York comes on, it's number one. And when Love and Hip Hop Hollywood comes on, it's number one. And I'm willing to bet a good amount of money that if another version of Love and Hip Hop comes on, it'll be number one on cable as well. Now, network television is something different. The ratings there are, are way different. Way, way, way different. You know, Survivor might... I don't, I don't know what the ratings are currently, but I remember Survivor... Sometime I get like maybe 20 million viewers. Big Brother was millions and millions of viewers. But we're talking about network television, right? When it comes to cable, cable television, you get less viewers. Less people have cable. But this is the thing, man. Your man, Mala Christopher, is either trolling or he's extremely conceited. I can't tell whether or not he's playing around. You know, I always enjoyed Milan being on the show and I was actually sad to see him go I'm like damn he seems pretty cool and after his storyline with Miles aka Sir Rock when things didn't work out between these two fellas I was like cool because I don't give a damn what anybody says you could call me homophobic or whatever you want to call it even though a phobia is a fear I'm not trying to see two dudes kiss each other in the mouth now these two dudes are on the show and they happen to have used to been in a relationship with each other I can watch and hear them talk about certain things. 
I'm not trying to hear them talk about their sex lives. I'm not trying to watch a kiss. And I'm definitely not trying to see y'all wrestling in the street, in the sheets. Hell to the gnaw. Not trying to watch that. But the fact that they used to be in a relationship and then there was that sexy girl. She reminded me of Carrie Hilson. What was her name? Amber Laura, her sexy ass. Skinny girl with a fatty on her. Two thumbs up, Ninja. When there was the whole situation between the three of them, the love triangle and this ninja, Sirak was Sirbai, and then you know, <laughs> you know, Milan was talking this shit to her, or whatever, and it, it, it was entertaining. I'm not gonna front. I'm sitting up there watching like this is <laughs> some crazy mess, and, and she was trying to act like she didn't know that the ninja was fruity, and, and, and it, it was. I'm talking about Miles. And I'm sitting there, I'm just watching him like, this is this is hilarious. And Miles looked like Will Smith. <laughs> Nigglet. That just really, oh man. It was it was a crazy season. It, you know, I don't know. Some people might say it was the best one out of the five seasons. But I don't know, bro. Milan, I don't give a damn about them ratings, man. I come to think of it. That damn episode, man, the very first episode of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season five may have been possibly was the best season of Love and Hip Hop ever, or at least in years. Actually, Love and Hip Hop New York season four. Whew, that was a beast, in my opinion. But any that was my favorite. But so far, this season has been. Sh Listen, y'all. Love and Hip Hop. Hollywood season five came out about as strong as Beyonce's breath, allegedly. Allegedly. This season has been the shit, allegedly. Shout out to Jennifer Williams. Don't say anything. Toss a breath mint in her mouth while she's talking. All right. This is my whole thing, man. I'm just playing. I love Jennifer Williams. She has nothing to do with this. She's on basketball wise. I just heard that her breath was stinking. Shout out to Zell Swag. That's fucked up, but she's still fine as hell. The point is this, man. Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 5 has been the bomb.com since it came back on. It's only been on two damn episodes. And it's been damn good. They shocked the shit out of me. Because I didn't think it was going to be this good. I knew it was going to be good. But damn. Really, that first episode. The second episode couldn't mess with the first one. The second episode was good. That first one was phenomenal. If you never watched the show before, you might watch the whole season after the first episode. Because you'll be waiting and craving. It was like... I heard that when people try crack for the first time, that once they use it the first time, they go trying to chase that first freaking high for the rest of their life. Like, like that, that's what they're chasing, is the feeling that they got from the first time they got high off that Nakatak. So, that first episode, which did not have Milan on it and did not mention him at all, was absolutely amazing. Phenomenal. It was so hilarious. It was so intense. There was shit going on in every damn scene. And I'm just sitting there on the edge of my seat. Like, and not just because of these hemorrhoids. But I'm sitting there like, damn. This is some crazy stuff. I didn't know it was going to be this good. And I was just saying to somebody, I was like, look. I'm talking about in real life, offline. I was like, look. The first episode, the first few episodes or so usually dry they're you know it's usually slow because they're reintroducing everybody you know they got to bring new people on the show and say this is so-and-so and this is what they do and you know the slong this i mean slow long <laughs> intro where they walk in all slow and they you know and they're like yeah i'm so-and-so and blah 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 and then they show their confessional going back and forth and then they you know had that symbol sound shh, sound that they have on all the reality tv shows and you know the music stops and then the newbie starts playing and you know how they shoot the damn show and you're just like oh there goes this asshole who, who, who are they I never saw this person before in the first ep few episodes or so usually when the season starts the, it, I would say the first two three maybe four it, it, they're just kind of like getting back into the uh, back into the groove of things but man Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season five from the first damn episode came out strong as hell came out like the Kool-Aid man busting through a wall. I'll, it's almost like, oh, yeah. I was like, what the hell? I, I just, I didn't expect for it to be that good, my Jesus. But Lyrica and A1, their storyline, shit with K. Michelle and Lyrica. Shout out to Lyrica. Lyrica is the star of the season. Uh, you know, everybody anticipating what's going to go down with Monice. You know, 
who else? There's just all types of stuff that was going on with the Princess and Monice situation. Really, Monice and Lyrica are running the yard this season, y'all. They can't be touched. But anyways, they're the stars of the show, hands down. But anyways, guys, man, wow. Crazy season already. Only two episodes in the Lyrica and Safari situation. Milan is that ninja, but ninja, please. You're that dude, Milan. Don't mess up the rotation. Come on, bro. If it was you that was making the show, then what's up with your show? Your show should be bigger than it because it's all about you. Wasn't he shooting a show? And I'm not trying to diss him either because like I told you, I like Milan. You know, he's a good artist. He's great at what he does. Overall, he's pretty damn good. But you're, you're, it's a whole cast of people there. It's not the Milan show. We tune in, we tune in to hear Ray J's funny jokes. We tune in to see A1's black nail polish. Okay, I'm just kidding. We tune in to see all of that booty, all the big booty chicks. Uh, Princess Love, Lyrica, Nikki Madaris, or as I like to call her, Nikki Madar ass, because she got all the ass in the world. Biggest booty on reality TV. Came a show with her big booty and how she's getting it deflated. We tune in for all these fine women. You know, we tune in for a lot of different things, man. And in all honesty, Love and Hip Hop didn't need a gay storyline. It just didn't. And, I mean, I would prefer to just see Milan on the show without a partner. Just him. I like the way that he was a real friend to whether it was Hazel E or Tier Marie. And, yeah, pe people be shitting on Milan. Like, I don't understand, you know, but as Tokyo Vanity pointed out recently after Love and Hip Hop Atlanta went off, as Moniz has pointed out, what your man 50 Cent said on his first album. These industry ninjas ain't friends. They know how to pretend. He said that in the song. Patiently waiting featuring Eminem. I think Eminem produced that record too with his whack ass. Eminem's so corny. But enough about whack rappers. The, the point is this. Tokyo Vanity pointed out and Monice basically let her know. Like I, I told you about these folks. I told you about these people. These people on these reality TV shows, man. A lot of them are fake and phony as hell. Now I'm not saying any names. Because I don't know who people are talking about specifically. But Milan seems to be a genuine, real person. And that's one of the things that I always enjoyed about him. I'm like, man, this dude is like really there for people. You know, because they all know I'm Team Pretty Girl. And he knows you know, a lot of these, these uh, homosexual ninjas know a lot of pretty women. So shout out to all the gay dudes out there. Uh, hold it if you're a real friend and you're a real one, holding down the pretty girls. Because <laughs> I can't hold them, hold them down all, my, all by myself. Shit. Um, <laughs> so... Milan appears to be a true, genuine friend who actually gives a shit about people. And a lot of these people that you see in the show is just like, you're just looking at them like, you're, do, you're just doing this for a check, right? You don't really care about that heifer, do you? Like, when the cameras go off, you're not going to call her. She's not somebody you, that can call you at 3 o'clock in the morning crying that their man left. You're not that type of girl, are you? You know what I mean? A lot of them chicks are just phony. But anyways, Milan seems to be one of the people on the show that was an actual real friend. Same thing with Hazel E. She, one of the reasons why I love Hazel, as I call her Basil. I love Hazel so much because like she's one of the realest people I see. Monice is a real one. Shout out to my baby Monice. Y'all know how much I love Monice. Anyways, y'all. <clears throat> after mentioning Monice and Hazel E's names. Just cracked open a new bottle of lotion. I gotta go. Uh, let me know what y'all think about uh, what Milan said. Do you think that he's the reading why, reason why? Look, I can't even talk. Thinking about what I'm about to go do. About to go mind my damn business. Do you think Milan is correct with what he says about ratings being down because of him? Or do you think that ratings are just down with TV shows on cable in general because it has to compete with the internet and they're trying to figure out how they're going to go head to head and toe to toe with the intranets? Because a lot of people will watch the show on the internet. Let's just be real here. Whether it's Mr. World Premiere or it's Broken Silence or one of those other websites. And that's S-I-L-E-N-Z. But anyways, guys, what, where do you watch the show? Do you watch it on TV or the internet? VH1 website. How do you view the show? And what do you guys think about what Milan had to say? I know most of you are not listening right now because I've been talking for approximately 20 damn minutes. Almost nobody listened this damn long to me. But if you did listen to this to me ramble this long, you owe me a comment, damn it. I need a comment. 
I need your opinion. Even if you just say hi, me, or just say hi, or hey, or hello, or F you. I need comments from everyone who's listening this damn long. Meat Magazine on YouTube, Meat Magazine on Twitter and Facebook, Meat Magazine blog on Instagram. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe, click the notification button. Share this video on social media with the host congregate on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, two cans with a string in the middle and telepathically, then that way I get more opinions in the matter. Remember, if you listen to me, me magazine, aka me magadaddy, ramble for 20 damn minutes, you can leave a comment, even if it's just high. It will be appreciated. And thumbs up the video. Nigglet.